hi. Welcome to this edition of My Semicon Daily TV. I'm Deborah Vogler, and my guest today is Dr. Randir Thacker. He is Executive Vice President and General Manager of the Silicon Systems Group at Applied Materials. Welcome, Dr. Thacker. Today's Thank topic. You, all right, well, today's topic is scaling transistors below 20 nanometers and the challenges for R&D and its funding. But before we begin, Dr. Thacker, I wanted to congratulate you on recently being named an IEEE Fellow. What an honor. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we're very pleased you could do this interview today. So, Well, my first question is focused on process variation. Uh, process variation has been a major concern of IC manufacturers for many nodes now, as, as you know. But as the industry goes below 20 nanometers, in concert with new transistor architectures, new transistor channel materials, extending optical lithography and or transitioning to EUV lithography, uh, we've got transitioning to 450 millimeter wafers going to happen, um, and more advanced wafer cleaning technologies. With all of these assaults, uh, as you will, these multiple assaults on process variability, how can they be, you know, how can process variability be controlled and contained? Well, thank you very much for uh, uh, taking the time, Deborah. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, in regard to the process variation challenge, uh, this uh, with the shrinking dimensions at 20 nanometer and below will continue to get more difficult. Uh, the challenge in wafer-to-wafer -wafer uniformity and uh, cross-wafer uniformity is definitely increasing as a result. Uh, controlling feature sizes to ensure repeatable and reliable device performance uh, requires uh, significant efforts. And these efforts are primarily in three different areas. First is to apply precision material engineering techniques in cross-wafer uniformity for deposition, thermal, as well as material removal. Material removal, selective material removal are becoming very important embodiments to make sure that the process variation can be minimized. Secondly, the in-situ metrology and control systems, which really cover our CMP tools, for example, uh, in addition to enhancements in process chemistry to ensure the level of precision are the key. And thirdly, improved device metrology and characterization in the three-dimensional era for assessing the hot spots in a vertical string for 3D9, for example, or picking up some of the defects in the fin fat case are becoming very, very important. So we are, on other hand, we are excited about this growing challenge, uh, which caters to our sweet spot in precision material engineering uh, in terms of material modification, removal, and behavioral characterization. And really, uh, what becomes important is uh, we as a company for 20 years have driven integrated processing. Our platforms such as Endura, uh, Centura, Producer platforms are workhorses uh, of the fabs of our customers to put these advanced devices in place. They all have the integration capability where multiple steps uh, can be combined together to control the interfaces. And therefore, this is what I mean by um, these challenges are moving to a prime material sweet spot. Can you get a little bit more specific about how you control these interfaces? What are maybe one of the top two challenges and, and how do you actually solve those challenges? Yes, so um, just to give you specific examples, uh, what we have typically is the native oxide removal uh, prior to, say, selective api deposition. Uh, so that we can have selective, conformal, and defect-free uh, deposition. We provide Centura systems uh, which have this integrated capability. Secondly, the challenge in the transistor where our customers have to put together the gate oxide or gate dielectric followed by the metal films or metal gate. Uh, we provide the integration capability uh, where the high K as well as the metal gate or the, uh, what we call as the nitridation steps along with the oxide can be integrated together uh, so that the interface can be controlled and it gives better leakage as well as better uh, uh, electrical behavior uh, for the devices. 
Dr. Thacker, you've mentioned metrology several times uh, in the first uh, first question, and obviously everybody knows that Applied Materials provides wafer ins uh, inspection and metrology solutions. So how is progress in these areas coming together with the other processes targeted by the company? Oh, that's right, Deborah. With the focus on low power devices with increasing performance, ushering in the 3D transistor era, related process steps such as precise junction depth, design rule compliance with significantly denser interconnect, ensuring low K films for RC delay are all gaining prominence. Uh, noteworthy uh, here to see is that the ramp rate required of our customers generation after generation is accelerating despite the complexity. Our customers almost are doubling their ramp rate um, with every generation and that's what it takes for them to stay competitive and therefore it's very important for us to make sure that we enable them. Last week one of our major foundry customers announced their FinFAT ramp which is occurring about one year after the 20 nanometer node. That is a major acceleration over the two-year cadence of Moore's law. Enabling all of this needs improved inspection and metrology capability. We have a strong investment focus on our process control and diagnostic growth, both with innovations in hardware integrated with advancements in the software side to ensure faster and more accurate defect detection. And now I'd like to segue, if you will, into R&D. Uh, now, this is a long question. I apologize, but there's just so much to get in here. I, I couldn't help myself. In recent years, it seems as though each new node is heralded with a call for greater R&D efficiency and leveraging collaborative models and research consortia. But the industry is even more co consolidated than ever before. And the number of leading edge players, of course, is declining. Now, this continued maturation of of the industry has to have even greater consequences for R&D efficiency below 20 nanometers. Are there some R&D activities that could benefit from a better coordinated industry response? And after you answer that, uh, perhaps you could touch on R&D funding itself. Uh, just how challenged are the equipment uh, suppliers and material suppliers? Well, first of all, uh, Deborah, all of us are very challenged with the R&D uh, requirements of uh, the current and the future technologies. Uh, as process complexity increases node on node, significant R&D effort is warranted to ensure that our customers can stay on the technology treadmill. We are driving many early engagements and collaborative R&D efforts across multiple parties in the industry. We really are working across the supply chain both with our suppliers as well as our customers. Uh, for instance, the G450C consortia uh, effort in Albany uh, to help realize 450 millimeter involves so many companies across the value chain, including R&D institu institutes such as IMEC, ITRI, IME, et cetera, and our university partners, and we work with all of them closely. We also con consciously drive early engagement at leading customers at their key inflection points by which we can enable their goals. As we talked uh, earlier, Deborah, with the, uh, the other two previous questions, uh, that the complexity is increasing. To address this and still stay on the Moore's Law cadence, it is extremely critical for us to engage early and also make sure that the investments are made only on those technologies which will work for our customers and as a result will work for us. Well, thank you very much for being my guest, Dr. Thacker, and sharing your wisdom with our audience. Thank you, Deborah. I enjoyed it. Take care. All right. Well, this wraps up another episode of My Semicon Daily TV. Please join us again.